This is Ultimate Soccer with Soccer Steve. <laughs> and welcome back to Ultimate Soccer. Another game coming up. Another pre-game. Wrexham taking on Mansfield Town at the racecourse ground. I cannot wait. And you know we've been talking about this game for weeks. It's here. Massive game for both teams. Phil Parkinson taking on Nigel Clough. Nigel Clough, the son of the great Brian Clough. And Nigel Clough is becoming a very good manager indeed, isn't he, eh? Top of the league. Are they going to stay there? Are they going to win the title? Who knows? But three points up for grabs at the racecourse ground. It's going to be tight. And it may be just the one goal that separates them after this 90 minutes plus. However many minutes they want to throw at it. But i got to tell you, it's going to be a great game. I hope you're excited for it too. As you can see, I'm really built up for it. And remember, you should be playing this just before the game. Give yourself a little shot in the arm. Give my son my own passion. My passion is coming through the screen right now at you. Boom. Take some of that. Bang. And take that passion to the game with you. Watch it on your screens. Watch it live, wherever. But this is going to be a smack up game. What have we got on the show? As you know, if you're a first timer, you don't know. But to the family who've subscribed, I say welcome back. Love all of you. Welcome back again. Keep coming. And drop a line down below. Give me your thoughts down below. Be a poet. And let me know what you're thinking. Now, on this one, we got the news. we got the stats. we got my opinion. I'd like to hear your opinion down below. The stats you're definitely going to love. Two minutes 47, not that long. No six-minute jobby here. Then we've got the game talk. We've got prediction. And we've also got highlights, like I told you. And then to finish, we've got a story about the 1981 FA Cup final. Yours truly was there. True story, again, from yours truly. And it was a bad day. And there's a whole story about this thing. You want to hang around because the story is quite unique, as all stories are. Who are the storytellers? The people that tell the story. So their story is unique every time. This is another unique adventure that I went on. And uh, 1981 FA Cup final. It was one to remember. And remember this, Wrexham fans, form is temporary. Class is permanent. As in every week, there's a prediction and then there's a game talk. Have a look at the prediction. I'll be right back to talk the game. So talking about the game, talking Wrexham first, they are the home team. It's a real simple plan that I've or a view that I've got with Wrexham and how this game needs to go. First of all, early start. Get settled early. Calm the nerves because going up against Mansfield, it's going to be a very nervy start. If you're not on your game, Wrexham need the ball, need to own it, need to become stronger than their fears. If they have any nerves, they've got to be brave and rise above it and become brave men altogether on that field for one cause. It's going to be a very, very tight game, no doubt about it. And to think that no one's going to have nerves would be ridiculous. I think you're going to see guys in the first couple of minutes not really testing each other too much and showing a little bit of, I want to come into this game smoothly. Hence, Wrexham... Probably going to be looking for the first goal in the 15 minutes. That storm. They're going to be looking for the storm the net situation and try to get on the board nice and early. If it doesn't happen, it's not a panic. At least you're testing and you're getting in your rhythm. And it's rhythm that Wrexham need in this game. And also, they need a lot of patience. You're going up against the top team, but the top coach who are in top form, doing very nicely. Thank you, yeah? It seems when they do drop a game, they come back and put wins together, not draws. So this is all about taking your time, taking the moments in the game. And people like Paulie Mullin, Ollie Palmer, yeah, Stevie Fletcher, Sammy Dolby, you gotta, you got to take the moment when it comes. So write those nerves early, get into the game, and let's have no, no slow start, no snoozers. Now at home, Wrexham's 13-3-3, yeah? 13-3-3. It's 42 points for 57. So for Mansfield fans, listen to that. 13, 3, and 3. 48 goals scored, 23 against. You're probably going to see Andy Cannon come into this game again, but don't, 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 don't kid yourself. The wing play with James McLean, Ryan Barnett, definitely going to get things happening as well. And I think that if Mansfield stand off, show too much respect, especially within that first 15 minutes, it might be a bad day for Mansfield, and it won't be a high score. I don't see a high score here. You've seen the prediction. I don't see a high score. 
I see it just by the one goal. And it could end up nil-nil like it did before. It may well happen. And a nil-nil wouldn't be bad for either team, really. But the draw favours Mansfield rather than Wrexham at this stage of the season. Take a look at the table. You'll see what I'm saying, right? Yeah. So basically, Wrexham just needs to play the Wrexham game, be on the front foot, grab the first goal, and manage the game better. Don't give up the lead if you grab it, because Mansfield will be looking to counterattack, no doubt about it. The motivation to win this one is to overtake Mansfield Town, and hopefully, hopefully, with the bad result for Stockport County, Wrexham could be on top at the end of this week's games. Hopefully. But that's with a win, and that's with a game where Stockport County don't come through. But a big win here for Wrexham could turn into an important little streak to finish the season on a high to gain automatic promotions. Three points can be had for Wrexham, but it's not going to be easy, and it will be a nail-biter. This is Ultimate Soccer with Soccer Steve. So let's get into the stats, guys. Each week I say press pause, you'll get longer on each image. And if you're a Mansfield fan and you haven't been here before, press pause, you'll get more time on each image. There's quite a few to go, so let's keep going. This is the pregame stats reel. Mansfield Town coming into Wrexham's racecourse ground to take on the Wrexham. Now, I'm telling you this, you're going to get a prediction later in the show as well. But as I say, this is going to be a bit of a battle as we move through. Now, let's take a look at the 12 games to glory. Yes, Mansfield fans, this is more for the Wrexham just for now, but keep waiting. Your turn is coming pretty soon. There you go. There's the 12 games to glory. Five down, seven to go. Mansfield is the next one up, but I tell you what, 10 points from 15 games, that amounts to 66%. That's not so bad, is it? And like I say, Mansfield is coming up next. Now, let's take a look at all the teams and all the games coming up. Friday, March 29th. Yes, take a good look. And as I say, I focus on the top five. Mansfield fans, you'll like this. This is your time as well. But the two home teams in the top five this weekend is Milton Keynes Dons and Wrexham. I wonder what the table's going to look like after that. But then after that, you've got to say there's three teams from the top five on the road. They are respectively Stockport at Forest Green Rovers, Crew Alexandra at Gillingham. And as I can't wait, and like you Mansfield fans can't wait to... Yes, Wrexham taking on Mansfield at Wrexham. I am absolutely looking forward to this one. I've been chomping and banging my jaws about this game for weeks. And guys that watch this channel, you know I am. Anyway, let's take a look at the table. It is tighter than a duck's ass. I tell you, it really is getting there. Even down in 7th with 59 and down in 10th with 58. One point separating 4th for the last chance saloon. But the, last, the next seven teams above that seem to be fitting into place. And the top five is the top five and has been for a long time. And as I say each week, who's getting automatic promotion? And who do you think is going to the playoffs? Now, there's the last five games. And that's the points for each team as you see it. Yeah, Rex not doing too bad now. Second in the league on form. It wasn't that good. But look at Mansfield down in eighth. Don't worry, there are only three points behind Wrexham at the moment, but there's lots of good news coming up when I get back on screen, when I give you my game talk and the prediction as well. But let's have a look at some of the hot shots and some of the top assists. You take a good butchers there, moving along, hot heads and top appearances, moving along, last five home and away for both teams. And I tell you, I am so looking forward to this game. I hope you are too. And that's the stats reel on the pregame. For you. Let's get back on screen. Now for Mansfield Town and Nigel Clough, they need to ride that 15-minute storm that's definitely going to be coming their way. And sometimes you do take a goal. Sometimes you don't. But they're going to ride that 15-minute storm. That's what they've got to do first. And if possible, grab a counter-attack goal in the process. That really could destabilise Wrexham on the day. And it might test those nerves that there will be in the first few little phrases in the game until people are settled. So an early goal for Mansfield Town on the road could steady Mansfield ship, could rock the boat for Wrexham and really knock it off kilter. It's possible. It could happen. And that's the danger with thrusting at the net non-stop like Wrexham are probably going to do. They've got to use that patience like I mentioned before. It's not all about going one way. Take it back to defence. Cycle. Recycle the ball as much as you can, but keep that possession. That's what Wrexham's got to do. 
You know Mansfield are good on the ball. Now, the thing is as well, Mansfield Town has got to be first to the ball for this to be a good away day. They've got to bring maximum energy. They've got to be at it all the way through. And when the subs come through right at the end of the game, the last 20, 30 minutes, they've got to be right at it as well. Let's take a look. Last home game for Wrexham was a 1-0 loss for Tranmere Rovers. It's not a really good score to come in with. Wrexham's lost two in the last five at home as well. Last five away, taking a look at the board, though. Three wins, two losses, 12 goals scored, five against, plus seven on the goals category for nine points. Nine for 15 on the road. I'll take that every day. I'll take that every day. That's definitely not bad. Like I say, Wrexham have failed to score in three of five home games. The last two, they didn't score. That was a nil-nil and a one-nil loss to Tranmere Rovers. However, you got to say, Wrexham do show great form at home. So, like I say, ride that 15-minute storm and the motivation, definitely the motivation for Mansfield Town is to remain first and then build a bigger breach separation between themselves and Wrexham and start to work on that with Stockport. And you might be looking at Mansfield Town becoming League Two champions this season. They're definitely going to get promotion unless the wheels completely fall off it. But ask yourself, can you see that? No, you can't. So that's what I'm saying with that. Got a story coming up right now about the FA Cup final 1981. And that was Tottenham Hotspur taking on Manchester City. 1981. Let's get into that right now. So in a nutshell, the 1981 FA Cup final was between Tottenham Hotspurs and Manchester City. And I thought it would only be right to show some class and put on this Manchester City shirt of the time. This is a Lecoq Sports Manchester City shirt of a few years ago, and Lecoq is Cock Sports, okay, if you didn't know. Now, the 1980 FA Cup final, Tottenham Hotspur and Man City. I was living in London, and my big brother took me to the final. I'd never been to an FA Cup final ever, but my big brother took me there, and we're outside the ground, and there's just thousands and thousands and thousands of fans, like, it's the big day, you know? It's like, and as a kid, I'm walking around like, and I am like, wow. I just taking it all in, soaking it in. It was just like I'm being literally hosed down with football history. It's like you can smell it, feel it, touch it all around you. The fans of both sets of fans, Tottenham fans, Man City fans were there on the concourse. And it was unusual to have such a big concourse around a stadium. But Wembley Stadium, Wembley, the original Wembley Stadium, it allowed you to have that. And it was just a great melting pot for all the fans to mix. Anyway, I'm there innocently as a little kid, you know what I mean? Watching uh, watching the day go by and enjoying every second. And all of a sudden, I'm going through these Man City fans with my big bruv, and we're on our way to get some food, yeah? And, uh, and we're not going to the game. We're just going there to check it out because it's a spectacle, right? We haven't got tickets to the match. We're just going there to enjoy the day and take it all in. And um, like I say, we're going to go through the crowd up the concourse, get some food. And all of a sudden, this big Man City fan grabs me and starts pushing me around. And he goes, I'm going to kick your effing head in. And I'm looking at him going, and I mean, I'm a kid. And this guy's got to be like 30, you know. And I'm like, I'm only a kid, mate. I'm like, what are you doing? You know, and he lets me go. And my big brother comes over and he's like, uh, you touch him again, I'll split your face forever. And it was nearly on right there. But Mark, my big brother, he's like, come on, let's go. And you might have thought that would have turned me off. Well, it didn't turn me off at all. I moved off away from that, carried on, yada, yada, yada. I still had a bitter taste in my mouth about this Manchester City fan. Yeah, this Manchester City. Bad taste for them. Yeah. But don't worry, revenge is sweet. And I didn't have to work for it. It came beautifully. So the game gets, gets underway. And Mark and I are watching it on TV. And a fella called Hutchinson, Scotsman, scores in the 30th minute for Man City, 1-0 Man City. They're up. And right near the end of the game, 79th minute, Tommy Hutchinson, the guy that scored the goal, yeah? And it's 1-0 right at the end. Tommy Hutchinson is in the wall for a free kick. And I do believe it was Glenn Hoddle that took the free kick. Hoddle 
smashes the ball and he tries to curve it around the wall to aim on net. And as the ball comes around, Hutchinson puts his shoulder up like this and his shoulder deflects it into his own net. 1-1. One, one. Tight final. Need a replay because no one else scored. Now, this is where it gets like... Guy that wanted to beat my f***ing head in, yeah? This is revenge all these years later. I know you're not watching, but this is what I was thinking all these years and still think to this day. And I hope you're not dead. I hope you're alive. But uh, see my sentiment? I'm not a bad guy. Anyway, the game's finished. Next day is Sunday. And tickets are on sale at Wembley. So we travel all the way up to Wembley because we're living in Wimbledon area. We're living in Southfields. We travel from Southfields, get on the tube, ding a -de ding get all the way up to Wembley, get out, walk up. And the ticket office was uh, an old building, but there's thousands of people queuing up. Now, me and Mark, my brother, we get there early because we're kids, right? Well, I'm a kid. And we're eager to get tickets, yada, yada. So we get there early and we're in line. And all of a sudden, I got two tickets for the replay. You can't imagine what that meant to me. Two tickets for the FA Cup final. I'm like, I'm like, wow. It's like, this is the holy grail, man. Like, unbelievable. I was so, and still am to this day. I can remember how I felt. And I saved those tickets. And it's like, wow, I've got two tickets. I'm going to the FA Cup final. I just can't bloody believe it. And my brother's got two tickets as well. And everybody else queuing up is getting two tickets. Do you know why? Well, here's part of the revenge. Smiley, smiley face coming off. The Man City fans had to go back to Manchester after the final, yeah? Well, not all of them could get back to London midweek for the final. So they would then be selling a lot more tickets to neutral fans, right? Spurs fans from other clubs in London, yeah? And you, I'd tell you, when Tottenham were playing that game, there was Arsenal, there was West Ham, there was Millwall, there was Crystal Palace, there was Chelsea... Oh, mate, there was a lot of Tottenham fans in there, All obviously. There was no Arsenal fans in there, not a chance. And uh, all, our, all all London fans from across London were converging to get tickets, to like make money and sell tickets, yeah? So here's the funny thing. I get my ticket, two tickets. We come back for the game, and I'm like, I'm going to be able to sell a ticket at the cup final, make some money and go in. Hey, No, because when I get there, everybody's selling a second ticket. Yeah, you're like, oh, my life, this ain't worth paper. So I stuck it in my pocket, went in the ground, and it's a case of, I got a ticket for the final. That is all I care about, right? So the final gets underway. And uh, remember, I've been threatened and pushed around and thumped a bit by this Mino Man City fan, yeah? Well, here's where revenge came sweet again, yeah? The final was the 100th FA Cup final. I'm in there, and I'm in with the Spurs Spurs are on their way to Wembley. Tottenham's going to do it again. Da -da 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 -da. You can't stop them. The boys from Tottenham. The boys from White Hart Lane. Whoa, I can still remember the song. Nuts job, hey? Yes. Anyway, the final was mega. And Tottenham, Man City gave us a real final. I mean, it gets underway. Eight minutes in. Ricky Ricardo Villa, Argentina. He gets the go-ahead goal after eight minutes. Steve McKenzie ties it up on 11. So all the joy for Tottenham fans only lasts three minutes. And then Man City fans on the other end of the stadium are like, yeah. And we're like, oh, my life. Can you believe that? Scored already. And then 50 minutes in, Kevin Reeves gets a penalty. And it's two on Man City. And it looks like the Cup's going to Manchester. Wow. Yeah. No. Spurs are like, none of that. We ain't having that. Garth Crooks, ex-Stoke City. Brilliant striker. He gets the equaliser on 70 minutes. And then probably the best FA Cup final goal you will ever see in your lives. Ricardo, Ricky Villa, scored the winner on 79 minutes. And I tell you what, that final was amazing. The singing was amazing. The atmosphere was, was, was amazing. The Tottenham one made me smile because I, obviously I had a bit of a shit stink about Man City because of that bully. And I'm only a kid. So at the end of the second game, I'm laughing my ass off. It's been a fantastic experience. And to the Man City fan that bullied me at the game a little bit, I'm wearing this shirt out of respect to your club. Okay? 
and I've had a few laughs about you over the years. Whoever you were, whoever you are, I hope you turned out to be a nice fella and not just a thug bully who picks on kids, you know. So anyway, there's a story. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, like I say, that was the 100th FA Cup final. And um, I've got to say, it stayed with me forever. Loved every moment of it. Now, quick news before we get out of here. Next game for Wrexham after this one is Doncaster Rovers on the road. And that is at the Eco Power Stadium. And as far as promotion goes, you got eight teams, sorry, five teams separated by eight points. It's six points that separates second to fifth. It was five. It's getting a bit more separation here, yeah? It seems the wheels have fallen off Cruz promotion, auto promotion, thoughts or hopes. So get into the playoffs. MK Dons, it's do or die time for the Dons right now going to the playoffs. Notts County, I've been keeping you up to date on Notts County. Forget about it. It's done. It's done. Forget about it. But hey, staying in League 2 from a League 2 from the National League in one season, that's still an achievement, yeah? Remember, form is temporary. Class is permanent. And I can see a massive game coming up here. I'm tipping Wrexham, obviously. We've been waiting for this game for quite some time. Now it's here. And I'll tell you, get ready for a massive game. Wrexham and Mansfield are going to deliver a very tight, cagey, but one goal can, can really open it up like a can of worms. I'm hoping it does, because I've been waiting for this game. I'm mega, mega waiting for this game. I hope you've been waiting for this game too. And I hope you have a fantastic time at the game, if you're a Mansfield fan. And also, if you're a Wrexham fan. Dilk, thank you. Get into it. Let's have it. Cheers.